Hey everyone, it's Javi here and in this video I'm going to be sharing some tips and tricks with you on designing tables in Figma. But not just any kind of table, our table is going to be responsive, it's going to have hover and click states that are going to be interactive for our rows and at the same time it's also going to be a component that we are going to be implementing variants on top so we can toggle the columns on and off all in the same table. And just to give you a quick tease of what that looks like, let's jump into Figma for a second here so I can show you this table. And as you can see, if I move this around, it's gonna be fully responsive to the adjustment in width. Also, if we go ultra wide here, and if I drill into the component itself, you can see that we've got our fancy variants here in place. And as you can see, as I turn some of these on and off, we've got the whole table that is reacting accordingly. So that is what I'm gonna be talking about today. For those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Javi and I make weekly videos about product design skills, principles and practices to help you build digital products and bring your ideas to life. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you wanna keep up with that weekly dose of pixels and code and everything in between if that sounds like something that you're interested in. All right, so let's jump back into our Figma file to start working on this table. There is a fundamental principle that we have to get a really good grasp on and really, really understand in order to get to designing tables like these in Figma, and that is the concept of auto layout and how objects flex based on the auto layout properties. And this is really important because it is truly the composition that makes this table responsive. And so if I'm just going to do a little bit of an abstraction here, let's say we're gonna draw a couple rectangles, right? So I'm going to make some rectangles here with different colors, and I'm just gonna do these for you so we can really understand how Flex in the background is working. And Flex is just the technical name for what you see in Figma as auto layout. So that is coming straight from the world of code and it's just a property that defines how certain objects behave next to one another given some adjustments to how that code is written. All right, so now that we got these five columns in place, imagine these are columns of your table and what we can do now is go ahead and do shift A in order to create an auto layout frame around these columns. So this is doing two things. It's first of all creating a frame uh, that is going to be containing all of these rectangles in the same frame. And the second thing that it's doing is that it's applying an auto layout with a spacing of one. I think we can bring that down to zero. And now we have an auto layout that is in type packed. There are two options here, packed and space between. And here you have the auto layout positioning. So we don't have to talk much in depth about that piece right now. What's really important is actually going into each of the objects, each of the rectangles that we created and looking at the properties of those instead. So here you can see that if I click on any of these rectangles, there are some resizing properties, essentially fixed width and fixed height. And this is gonna dictate what happens to the rectangles as this is gonna be moving left and right in scale and up and down. So the reason why these are not moving right now is because we have a property per rectangle that is fixed width that says, no matter how much you move this table, it's not going to change the width of any of the objects within it because we want it to be fixed, right? So let's say now what I wanna do is I wanna say, okay, this is gonna be, instead of a fixed width, it's going to be fill container. Let's see what happens now. So. Not much is happening right now, and that is because we have this outer layer that is covering the entire area here of our rectangles. And because there is no extra space for that first rectangle to move around, it's just going to be staying in the same place. And that is why when you make that adjustment, not much is gonna happen at first. But now, however, let's actually try to do the same thing we did before and actually move this left to right. And as you can see, now the first rectangle is no longer fixed in width and it's actually moving along the table as we scale. So that is one thing to keep in mind. What is also worth mentioning is that if I take any of the other rectangles 
and I change the property there from fixed width to fill container. So let's take, for example, this green one in the middle. Let's change it from fixed width to fill container. You can see that now that extra width that we are adding to the table is being split amongst these two rectangles at the same time, right? So as you can see, the red and green are staying with the exact same width adjustment because they are behaving in the same way as we are adjusting the width of the table. If we now wanted to go ahead and take this model and apply to design a table like this, what I would do is first of all define the types of columns that are gonna make my table based on the kind of objects that live within that column, right? So in this case, for example, we would have, let's say, one column here that is about users, and this is gonna have an avatar, profile picture, a name, and a subtitle. This column is gonna be text only. This column is gonna be, let's say, this little badge, and these are gonna be tags. So we have four different types of columns here. And so what I'm gonna do is show you how to recreate one of these columns in order to go through that design process. But what I actually did is something a little bit different. And we will talk about that in a second. But just to share with you the practice of creating these columns. Here in my case, we have a little component here that is the single composition of a row item. So I could go ahead and take this, and this, by the way, already has an, a built-in divider at the bottom for the border bottom. To be a little bit faster now, I can select both of them, do my Shift A for auto layout, and change the spacing in between to zero. And now I have a vertical auto layout. I can call this users, and I'm just gonna simply duplicate a couple of these so now we have that in place and it could be worth it now that we're here to also make sure that all of these are going to be resizing based on the fill container property. So as I'm re resizing the whole column, it's going to adjust right as we expected. So now if I do this, it may not be too practical, but you get the idea of how things are responding as I do that width adjustment. Now that we have this in place, I'm gonna go ahead and create a component out of this and we're gonna be calling this column, right? So we're good to go there. And now we wanna have a couple of variants for this column because we have different column types, right? As we described earlier. So I'm not gonna be doing all of them, but just to show you the variant effect for how this works and how it could be handy for you is I'm gonna go ahead and just adjust the width here of my variant box. Probably not gonna need this one here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another column here for just normal text. And I'm gonna do it outside of the variant for the first shot at defining this because I wanna be able to define the auto layout nicely here. So I'm just gonna do a duplicate. I'm gonna drag it outside and then I'm gonna use auto layout here with zero spacing in between to create one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's do that. Three, four, five, six, seven. So we're good to go there. And we can call this column actually, because now if I make a component out of it, I can drag it into my auto layout here. Sorry, not auto layout, my component variant. And as you can see, it's going to integrate it nicely. Now we just have to make sure that we are adjusting the property names here. So this is gonna be called, let's say type. And now if I come here to each of these columns, I can give it a specific name. So this type will be users and this one, let's say will be text. All right, so we are good to go there. Let's just also double check that we do the resizing appropriately of each of these row items to fill container. This is very important. And now that we have these in place, roughly you could go ahead and make a table, right? So if I just drag this one outside, it will create an instance of that column component. And now that we have this in place, I can actually take you back to the rectangles and imagine that these are the rectangles that we created here in the beginning of the video. And so what you would do is literally the exact same thing. You would take the column and you could say, okay, I want this one instead of users, I want it to be text. And now I'm gonna have another text. And let's say I'm gonna have another text. And there's a little bit of an awkward 
spacing here with the width. So let's actually adjust that. I think that is coming from this component right here. Let's see, where is that coming from? That is coming from the row item itself. And I think that is because I copy pasted it from this table here that already has some kind of auto layout in place. So let's go ahead and fix that just by moving this a little bit. I'm gonna change it to 259 and also gonna make sure that this is 259 as well. So let's give that a shot and this should be a little bit better once we are putting them together. So now I think that the width also changed in the row item properties. We have to change the resizing again to fill container and now hopefully there's no awkward spacing. Okay, that's great. And here's the thing. So now we have those rectangles in place. What we're gonna do now is create a outer frame that is going to be an auto layout. So we're gonna hold my shift A around these four different columns. And there we go. Now we have made ourselves sort of a simple table. I'm gonna rename this to table. In this case, we have the user column here having a little bit more width than the other three, which are text, as you can see. If I were to go ahead and make all of these fill container, you will see that they will proportionally share whatever width the table has. So if I were to resize this, let's say, you can see how everything inside of it is also resizing. And if I were to, let's say, remove a column from this table, all of the other columns are going to be adjusting appropriately, right? If I were to, for example, add a column, you will see that the adjustment is happening, but in the inverse, everything is becoming a little bit more condensed. So that's pretty cool because it's going to allow you to design tables very quickly. And honestly, if you're not interested in the whole like interaction thing between the columns that we're gonna look at now, this is probably the fastest way to design tables in Figma. You're gonna be creating the different types of column types that you're, you're gonna wanna have across your tables. And then once you are here, you're designing a table for your ad hoc design solution or, or design project. And you're gonna be just simply adding and removing columns and then defining what those column types will be. And now that we have this in place, we can also mention that in some scenarios, you may wanna have one of the columns that is fixed all the time. So that could be, for example, with respect to the first column right here. And I could say, I want this to be always 400. And just to make it obvious what we're looking at, we can take each of these. And because we have the background applied to the individual row item, I have to do it here. We could just change the color here to make it a little bit more obvious. You can see, well, not this one because I think this is the color of the background of the file. So how about something like that? And as you can see now, everything else is fill container except this one, which is fixed width. If I were to go ahead and now resize the table here, you can see that the first column is going to stay fixed, but all the others are adjusting their width uh, accordingly as we saw earlier, but in this case, without the first one. And this could also be quite handy because sometimes or oftentimes you're gonna to wanna to have maybe one column that is always gonna keep that width so you know what fits and that information stays relevant across the experience. So that is another tip for you to actually design tables uh, in Figma. There are two more things that I wanted to walk you through in this video, which I mentioned in the beginning, which we haven't covered yet. And the first one is how to wrap this around a component, which you can then use variants on top to easily toggle columns on and off. This is a bit more of a comprehensive amount of work, a little bit of manual work as well. And this is gonna work well for you in the case that you have a very clear understanding of what a structure of your table is across your product. And if it makes sense for you to have, the, you know, be making use of variants to easily switch columns on and off, that's fine. Other times what you can do is if you have those columns in place, just easily uh, show or hide them. If you just have one component, let's say, you can just show or hide them and that's fine. In this case, I just wanted to use, uh, you know, the very comprehensive example here just to show you how far you can get, right? So. If I were to now, here you can see the variants. And each of these variants is essentially a combination of switches that are either on or off for those columns. So as you can see, I have a true or false for checkbox, a true or false for the role column, the status, the tags. And if you wanna see this in action, 
then here is the example that I had earlier in the video that I was demoing. And what you can see here are those toggles. So if I were to show or hide any of these, as you can see, we have the appropriate changes on the left side here in our table. So I'm showing and removing all of the properties of the table based on the adjustments and the variance. So there's that. If you wanna go ahead and do that, it's pretty easy, even though it's quite manual and the return on investment may not be the greatest. Uh, but that is something that you can definitely do with tables if you have a very clearly defined structure for them across your product. The last thing that I wanted to cover in this video has to do with the interaction design of the individual row components of our table and how to make that work with what we've talked about so far regarding responsiveness. And I'm mentioning this because if you'll recall, we've been having a very heavy emphasis on the way columns work. And this is great because it's really fast. And as I mentioned earlier, if you don't really care about the interaction design of the rows, because it is a lot of extra work and it's not gonna pay off for you, then this is gonna be the fastest way to just set up your column types and easily add and remove them from tables as you are designing them in your product. If you wanna take it a bit of an extra notch and design those interactions, that's cool. But just so you know, there are some extra steps that we have to take because as it is right now, I don't have a lot of control over saying, you know, what exactly happens if I were to, for example, hover over this row or that row. And it's a little bit hard in Figma to do that because we're not really defining this row as an item of our table. As you'll notice, we just have columns. To get a better understanding of how we can make this work, I'm just gonna quickly walk you through the layer structure of the table that I've already created. And as you'll notice, this is a table component that is composed of a head component here at the top with the properties of each of the column, the property names, let's say. And here we would have each of the rows. And if I dive deep into one of these rows, I'm just gonna make sure I bring it up here so you can see it. This is essentially a combination of frames for each of the columns. And this is going to be working exactly in the same way as we defined each of the individual items of our columns earlier, right? So if you'll recall, this was the exact same frame that I used to compose a column. What is changing here is that instead of using this component or this frame to create a column, I am using it horizontally and combining them to create rows. And the way that this will work is that you have to then define per item what is the resizing, right? So in this case, I wanna have all of these be fill container with the exception of the more options button here, which is going to be fixed width. And I believe also the checkbox here at the left is fixed width. So that is one of the main differences, but the other main difference with respect to our column structure earlier is that if you'll recall here, it's very easy to add and remove columns, right? I could just say, you know, I wanna remove this from view and it gets removed. But of course now, because we don't have columns in place and let's say I were to create a, or, you know, not even create, but I wanted to remove a column from here and I didn't have these uh, toggles for the variants. And honestly, that's the reason why I ultimately made these variants so that I could easily add and remove columns from the view. It's because otherwise it becomes a little bit hard because I have to be going into each of these and you know removing individual row items from the view because now those frames are belonging to each of the row items that compose the table rather than being a single column itself. So you know I could achieve the same effect. If I were to remove just one of them, it would make this look a little bit weird and I wouldn't want to have that. So as you can see, it is possible to combine both worlds, the responsiveness and also the row structure of our table, but it comes at the trade-off of having that flexibility to easily add and remove rows. But what we get instead is the ability to, to you know, introduce changes to how the rows react to interaction. And I essentially have the row component built right here. So. I just created, instead of having components for each of my columns, I have a component that is for, for the row itself. And what I did here is I created a row component with three states, default, hover, and active. And so as you'll see here, I have just a little bit of a change in the way that I styled the background here. So it's going from 
uh, in this case nothing, to, um, to gray 100. So this is going from white to gray 100. And then when I am doing the, uh, you know, the active state when I click on the hover row, it's going to turn this into a little bit of a light blue and the checkbox will be turned on as well. So if we have a look at how this works in prototyping, if you have the interactive components built in already uh, in Figma, which is currently in beta, you can see that we have one while hovering effect for this one to go into the hover. And then if I move my mouse out of the hover, it's gonna go back to the normal state. So that is, that is one interaction between the two. And then the other uh, effect that we would want to achieve is that when I click on the hover row, it's going to turn on into active. And if I click on the, on the active row again, it's going to go back to the hover. So if I were to go now into prototype mode, and we can do that because I have a frame here with our table component. There we go. So just to show you how this works, if I were to, let's say, hover over this, you can see we have the hover effect in place. And now if I were to click anywhere on the row, it's going to go to the active state. And if I click outside, it's going to unclick it and go back to the hover. And we can do this for all of the rows essentially, right? Because all of these are instances of the same component ultimately. So I could select this one, then I could, let's say, come to the one below it. And if Figma wants to do this with me, uh, as I am squeezing the power of my computer here, you can see that I could select and hover over multiple of these because again, these are instances of the row component where we define those interactions. And that is pretty much it. As you can see, we have a table with the interaction design. Uh, it's a component with variance and it is fully responsive. And that is all for today. I hope that you found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to give it a like to let me know. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions regarding anything that we covered in this video or things that you want to see related to this in the future, let me know in the comments section below. I hope that you are safe and well, and I will catch you in the next one.